As soon as I tasted it, I was like, this is a billion dollar burrito. This is gonna be huge. This is gonna be ginormous. She's like, well, I don't really know. And I'm like, no, this is gonna be huge. I'm Isabel Lee. Hey, I'm Luis Fernandez. And we are the founders of Forsyth Firescape, a scallion pancake burrito pop-up. Located in Chinatown, New York. It wouldn't have happened if we didn't move to New York. That would have never happened. We would have no never way. been influenced by all these different cultures living literally on top of each other. You know, on the one corner from our old apartment was Dong Huang's Dominican bodega. Right. Literally on the other corner was the Chinese bodega. And then across the street, was it was called Chinese Hispanic Deli. Yeah, we were influenced to create this dish, to be in that space and be inspired by it. It wouldn't have happened if we didn't move to New York. It's bake day today. We let the meat come to room temperature after marinating for about 48 hours in the fridge. We want it to steam and we slow roast it and that way, you know, it kind of cooks in, in its own juices. Essentially, this is pulled pork, and, and pulled pork is not about the temperature, it's about the consistency. And so I think total time will be like five-ish hours. And it gets that tender flavor. Yay! Yeah, I'm gonna set it right now. We had so many blessings during uh, the pandemic, actually. Like, I started painting, I started a clothing line. I started cooking a lot more. We wanted to do something that reminded us of home. Coming from California, I'm used to eating tacos all the time, going to taco trucks. Mexican cuisine is very, very prominent. Uh, and I, I was missing that. I hadn't found those places here. And so I think that's kind of how like a, a burrito was formed. Okay, there's oil. It's liquid go! It's liquid go! Okay, so now the meat has been in the oven for about three hours. So I'm removing the liquid gold, is what it is. Every piece of meat is covered in marinade. The very last step, broil it so that the fat gets crispy. And the meat gets a little bit charred too, and that's really where the flavor comes together. And we just drink this like water, don't we? Yeah, that's our secret, that's what keeps us going. We, yeah, we don't really drink water, we just drink this. I had been making scallion pancakes a lot at home because I was missing home and that's a lot, you know, it's a dish that we had at home that my mom made. At the same time, Luis was eating Brini like four times a week because around the corner is Don Juan's Bodega. So he's bringing these foods back home. I'm eating the scallion pancakes and we just start to naturally put them together. It is delicious for sure. I added the guacamole, he was like, put in the, the queso blanco, and it kind of eventually formed into this burrito. Yes, that is the dough. It's almost ready, so that's a good texture. You want it to be like that so it doesn't dry out, and then when you're eating it, it doesn't feel dry. The beginning was a lot of trial and error. A lot of scallion pancakes were eaten. <laughs> Traditional scallion pancakes are very crispy, um, so I made it a little bit thinner. Still flaky, still chewy, still crispy, but not too hard because you're just, you're, it's a big bite. At the bodega, we were making around 100 per week. And now that we're at the food hall at Ali Ali, I mean, we have a ginormous kitchen. And so we're able to make more. There was that like aha moment, like when we were- The bite of all the flavors together of the, you know, the pernil yes. and the scallion pancake. Yes. The, the chili sauce, everything together was a bite that I had never had. It was just 
there's no way that we couldn't share it with people. Yeah. So I just want to show you the fire escape where it all began. It's not the first one, but the second one on the right, right there. That's where I would crawl over my bed, out the window, stand on the fire escape, and lower the burritos in a bucket down to the sidewalk where people would come and pick it up. Yeah, there's no contact, it's easy, it's fun. This is a cool way to just bring some light, you know, at a time that was very ambiguous. And also in Chinatown too, I thought it'd be a fun thing to do, um, especially with a lot of what had been going on in Chinatown, businesses being closed and just a lot of uncertainty. That first weekend, I think it was like 13 burritos that we had friends and family come to, wanted to try it out. And it was just so fun. I remember it being so fun. But the excitement was very palpable and you could feel it on both ends. Yeah. So we only had it for a couple weeks, but the people who had it, it's they were like, I was there when they had the bucket though. I mean, the origin of the burrito has always been about, you know, community and bringing our cultures together. And then Gus, the owners, and Freddie, the owner, they're just like, dude, we have a whole bunch of people that are never in here. Yeah. Like, not every single person buys something, but I forgot the numbers, uh, like, around, like 30, 25, 25% of the people buy something. And buy something at the bodega. Right. That just added another, another dimension of, like supporting now this small business right. in Chinatown. Are you here for Foresight? Yeah. Hey, what's the name? Nick. Nick, I'm Isabel. I'm the one you've been messaging with. Nice to meet you in person. <laughs> My favorite feedback is when I have, um, when Dominican people come and they're like, this penil is fire. Cause that just means the penil is cooked perfect, you know? People come back and they're like, I just, I just finished it, but I need to tell you that that was amazing, yeah. you know? Like, they'll leave with their burritos. They'll leave and come back half an hour later and they're like, we just, we ate in silence and uh, that was amazing. Yeah, the, the comment we get all the time is people will come back and they're like, I get it now. <laughs> I understand now. I, I get it. One of my friends came back, he's like, this is it. This is it. This, this yeah. was it. That's it for this episode of Food Curated. I'm Liza DeGia. Be sure to connect with us on social media and eat more stories. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.